Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Practical Legal Training at the College of Law. My name is Jackie Owen, and I'm the Relationship Manager for the College of Law Queensland. And I'm joined this evening by my wonderful colleague, Tara Kush, who is celebrating her birthday today. So happy birthday, Tara. I think we should all raise a glass um, in our own spaces and wish Tara a very happy birthday. So um, it's lovely of her to join us on her special occasion. Um, so welcome everyone. What we're going to do tonight is chat through, um, oh Casey's got a virtual cocktail. Oh, that's clever Casey. Um, we're going to chat through everything to do about practical legal training at the College of Law. Some of you are finishing very, very soon. Some of you have a year to go. Some of you might have longer than that, but it will be here before you know it, it'll be you'll be graduating and moving on to the next step in your legal journey. So it's great no matter where you are in your studies, even if you are on the very first day of first year, it's never too early to come and hear this information and just learn a bit more each time. We do do this um, presentation every semester and it's great to just chuck, tuck this information away, ask as many questions as you'd like and um, hopefully we can give you all the answers that you need um, to move forward through to practice practical legal training. So welcome and thanks um, for being here this evening. So please feel free to um, chuck questions in the chat, save them to the end as we go along, whatever suits you. Um, if there's something that you'd like to chat to me about offline, you, I'll give you my contact details and you can always email me um, to make a time to chat one-on-one -on, -one on the phone. So happy to do that as well. Um, okay, so let's get started. I'm just gonna um, share some slides and get them happening. I've got a ring light here, so I can't quite see where my all my buttons are. There we are. That looks good. Excellent. So practical legal training at the College of Law. So here are my contact details. Um, I would love for those of you who aren't connected with me on LinkedIn to send me a LinkedIn um, connect either now or if you're watching this presentation a little bit later on. My email address is probably the next best thing to write down as well, joan at collaw.edu.au. Um, if you would like to email me to make a time to chat further, um, we can certainly do that. And of course, follow the College of Law on social media. Sorry, my lighting's playing up this evening. I don't know. I look like the Phantom of the Opera. Um, but follow the College of Law on Facebook and also LinkedIn to find out lots more information, not just about PLT, but but about what's going on in the legal profession. We also have lots of free webinars from time to time, for, especially designed for students. So those are great as well. Um, and things like our annual careers academy and other events that we put on free for students to help you get prepared for graduation and stepping out into the profession. So as we gather for this presentation, I recognise that many of us uh, watching from online from different lands of different traditional custodians. And I would like to acknowledge all of the traditional custodians of the lands we are each present on today and any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are part of our audience today or watching the recording at a later date. We pay our respects to each of their elders past, present and emerging. So let's get started. I love this analogy. You've been very busy over the past few years building your boat. So the boat being the, the lessons that you've learned about the law, which is the theoretical foundations that you do require to be an entry level lawyer and to step out into the profession. However, before you can move through to being an admitted practitioner, you need to learn how to sail that boat. And what we do in PLT is we add the practical tools to that theoretical knowledge to allow you to step out with confidence and competence into the legal profession, into that role as an entry level lawyer. Of course, you will keep learning, especially over the first two years. Um, you'll be learning new things every day. You'll be honing your skills, but this is um, getting you to that initial standard to be able to do that first job and to be able to practice the practice of law in a safe, secure environment where if you make a mistake, all that will happen is that you will learn from that mistake. No one's going to, to jail or losing their house, their home, their business. Um, their family, their kids, or anything serious like that. Um, and you'll just be learning from your mistakes and making sure that you don't make them for real. So hopefully this slide is not any kind of a shock horror for, for those of you um, tuning in either now or watching the recording. 
Just having a law degree is not enough to be able to call yourself a lawyer. And if you do with just that law degree without taking this step, next step of practical legal training and admission, you can get yourself into a lot of trouble. So the first step that you definitely need that some of you are nearly ticking off is that academic law degree that you've nearly completed from Griffith University. Then you will do practical legal, legal training, also called PLT, and you will acquire a graduate diploma of legal practice, which is the qualification that the College of Law will give you at the end of PLT. Once you've got your completion certificate, you will prove yourself a fit and proper person. Sounds like you should be doing a lot of sit-ups, doesn't it? But that's all done through the admissions board and then you'll go through that process and then um, have a lovely ceremony in the Supreme Court in Brisbane. You will ask someone to move your admission. They stand up and sort of ask the court. They say, you, state your name, where you've studied, where you've done PLT what quali like, and what your law deg your degree is. And if sometimes if you've got another degree, they'll, they'll mention that as well. And they ask the court... Um, you know, for permission to basically move you um, into a um, legal practitioner and the, the judge will nod and then um, you'll sit down the next person will stand up. Then after sort of that's happened for every single person um, in the group, and there's usually 20 to 25, I guess, in each group, you'll all file out, you'll sign the role of solicitors and then um take a lot of photos and then go to lunch. It's a really fun day and it's worth uh, scheduling the whole day off and bringing your nearest and dearest, those who have supported you to watch that ceremony. It's really lovely. You will then also, don't forget to apply for your practicing certificate from through the admissions board and you'll receive that um, and then you're a lawyer. So you can work, work in legal roles, non-legal roles. And then if you do want a different stage to move through to being a barrister, you then um, you might do the bar course and um, go to the bar. So, but we're talking about that first stage through to solicitor today. So we had a bit of a chat to some of our graduates about this time last year and talked to them about what they thought the benefits of doing practical legal training at the College of Law. The main thing they all talked about was flexibility. So a program that fits in with competing life commitments. So that could be work, family, volunteering, um, any charities that you support, um, caring obligations, or all of the above. We, all, all, we have all got different things going on in our lives. Um, so the College of Law will fit around that. Um, the first week is full-time Monday to Friday sort of intensive workshops. Uh, but after that, as long as you've got um, good internet connection, um, you will have due dates when all your work is due. And we give that to you right from the start. However, you can work ahead. You can work at night. You can work during the day. You can work in and around the other things that you've got happening. We also have a team um, of very experienced legal practitioners who will be mentor mentoring you and teaching you throughout the course so much like Tara. She's actually one of our PLT teachers, which is why I brought her along. So all of our mentors, teachers, um, guides through the program have been or still are practicing lawyers. So they're very experienced and they know the pressures and the, you know, the um, responsibilities of being a lawyer. So if you get pulled into a matter or have to go to court or something happens on something that you're working on and you might need a couple of days more um, to get something um, completed, they're not going to be shocked. And believe me, you're not the first person, probably even that day, asking um, for that. So they are there to help you get through the course and to keep you on track as well and to help you meet all your College of Law obligations around the rest of your life. It's also about giving you those practical skills. So we talked about that um, just before, um, adding the practical skills, practicing, practicing the law, um, the uh, doing actually doing the law. So doing real world tasks rather than just learning more legal theory. You've already done that through your law degree. It's about setting you up from, for success and supporting you to be career ready from day one in that new role. And it's also about, um, I guess, 
being able to trust the College of Law and our experience at training lawyers. So the College of Law is nearly 50 years old, nearly 20 in Queensland, but nearly 50 nationally. And we've been training lawyers since the early 70s when Tara and I are just young things, babes in arms we were. Um, So um, all the top firms, so sort of 30 plus top firms across Australia trust us to train their graduates as well. So we've been doing this a long time and the College of Law only exists to, to train lawyers. We don't do undergraduate law degrees. We do practical legal training. We do CPD. We do master's programs. We do the mediation courses and we also do the legal practice management certificates, which is what you need to open up your own firm or become a partner. So all we do is train lawyers pretty much as soon as they graduate from uni through to the day they retire. So we're very, very trusted throughout the profession. Now, there's a few decisions to make about what is best for your life and your commitments. So let's dig a bit further into how the College of Law is flexible. So first of all, do you want to do that program completely online or would you like to do it in a blended version or a mixed version? So if we were talking BC, that's before COVID, Tara and I would be sitting here saying, okay, well, week one is face to face and you either come up to Brisbane and do one of the courses for week one and then the rest is online or we come to the Gold Coast twice a year, end of June, end of November, and you do it um, quite often on the Griffith University campus at the Gold Coast, week one, and then you move online for the rest of the program. However, of course, COVID happened and we were very quickly able to move to a completely online course because we do that very well. That's pretty much how we've been teaching for a lot of years. Um, So you get to choose that now. So we are coming back to the Gold Coast um, at the end of November. The dates are on online. I want to say it's like the 25th maybe of November around there. That was sort of last week of November. Now, if you are sick of doing it all um, studying online and you would like some human interaction and uh, be able to be in a classroom, meeting other people and interacting with other people and doing all those, um, all the activities in the work in person, then make sure you jump on and register pretty much straight away. Um, for that. So we need a minimum of 10. It's not a very interactive workshop if it's you, Tara, and one other person down on the Gold Coast um, trying to do a workshop. We do need about 10 people to be registered. I think there's only about two at the moment. So spread the word. If you've got any friends that are graduating this semester who are keen to do it face-to-face, then get on and register straight away. Even if you're um, not finished yet. Um, you don't even have to have your results by the by the beginning of, of when the course starts, but just get, get in there. Um, you can also actually, if you've finished your Priestly 11 and have no more than two electives left to go, and this sometimes works well for Griffith students with your trimesters, you can apply to the admissions board to come in early if you finished your Priestly 11 and have no more than two elect- electives left to go. So that's blended or fully online. You might decide that, no, you want to start in March and you're happy to do that um, fully online. So that's just week one um, online as well as the rest of the course. So it's just that one, that first week, face-to-face or online. Weeks two to 15 or two to 30 are online either way. So that's the first one. Um, Do you want to study with us part-time or full-time? Full-time is 15 weeks and part-time to 30 weeks. So if you're working full-time, we do recommend that part-time option. So week one, yes, is full-time with us. So whether it's online or whether it's face-to-face, it's Monday to Friday, nine to five um, for that first week. And then you'll, um, so the part-timers will then drop back to um, the rest of the program online. Weeks two to week 30 are more a part-time program. But if you can't take that that first week and sort of dedicate it, it, you might it might just not be convenient for work or you know whatever else you've got going on. You can actually do our evening option, which is where we take week one, we carve it up into about twelve different workshops, and we run that across six weeks. Tuesday nights and Thursday nights starting at six and that's on Zoom. So that's a great way. There's about four um, offerings of that a year. That's a great way um, to do it as well if if you don't want to do that um, 
during the day, Monday to Friday, nine to five. Um, it's probably better to do it sort of at the start in one big chunk, but it doesn't always work for people. And that's why we have that option to give you that flexible option. And with over 150 intakes across Australia a year, about 30 in Queensland, um, we can find one that if you just miss out on one, you don't need to wait very off, uh, very long to do the next one. And we have um, courses starting this month, um, November, sort of right, sort of end of November, um, beginning of December, and then there's um, January courses, February courses, March courses. So there's lots of intakes coming up. Um, if you do do it face to face, um, we offer that week one on the Brisbane campus, uh, which is just um, near the legal precinct in Brisbane, opposite King George Square and Town Hall. But we also teach that week one face to face when we have enough people in Cairns on the Gold Coast, Rockhampton, Sunshine Coast, Toowoomba and Townsville. The Sunshine Coast is looking really strong, like it'll go ahead. Um, the Gold Coast is sort of um, the next one that we expect to be quite popular, but lots of people are electing to stay online and that's totally up to you. If it doesn't go ahead and you're registered in that face-to-face um, -face one, you just move to the online one. So um, we sort of time them. Okay, let's um, drill down into the three course pillars. So I like to think of um, PLT as broken up into one, coursework, two, work experience, and three, your CPE or continuing practical um, professional education. Now, at the end of the course, you need to have a tick in all three of these tick boxes under your name in the system to trigger your completion certificate and gain that graduate diploma of legal practice. So preferably by your course end date, but don't worry if you don't quite um, get it all done. You've got a little bit of time afterwards. So let's talk about coursework first. Um, Tara's going to jump in and talk, uh, show you um, a few bits and pieces and talk a little bit about it from a lecturer's point of view. But basically, the coursework, it's either over 15 weeks or 30 weeks, as we've talked about. Um, you attend that first week of workshops um, full time unless you do the evening course, but let's just say week one, nine to five, Monday to Friday. Um, and at the end of that, that ticks off your lawyer skills and then you'll do four compulsory subjects and then choose two electives. Um, then you will also complete your work experience at the same time. Um, and I'll talk a bit more about that shortly because some of you actually might have already ticked off some of your work experience already, which is great. Um, so there's three options for you there. And then your CPE, we basically give you some modules to do. And it also gets you a second certificate, which is exciting. So this is how um, learning at the College of Law is. We learn things. We learn by doing. We practice those learnings. So for each subject, we'll actually be, instead of, sort of submitting theoretical essays, because in real life, what we want to do is mimic the real world of work. Your boss doesn't say, hey, um, Casey, what are you, what's going on with that matter? Step, step in, you know, next Friday, give me 500 words on where you're up to. Your boss will say, oh, Casey, would you be able to come into my office and tell me where you're up to with that matter? Um, and you have to be able to verbally communicate where you're at, what you're thinking is, what you know, why you're going, taking a, a certain path, um, and also to be able to explain things verbally to your clients who don't have law degrees, most likely. Um, so you'll practice, you'll submit those documents. Um, so basically, you know, mock um, the documents on the mock matters. So for each, and Tara will explain more, for each um, task, it'll be like, here's your file, here's all the information you need, this is what you need to do um, with some pro formist and, and um, like a proof making model and, and various things along the way to, to, to actually help you structure that work. You'll submit that to your mock boss. So someone like Tara, um, who's guiding you through that course, they'll give you feedback and then um, let you know if that's um, if, if that's um, sort of um, needs to be resubmitted or, or if you're moving on to the next thing. So um, if you have to resubmit things, that's just a learning experience. So go through the feedback, put that feedback into your work and then you resubmit. And then when um, that task is sort of ticked off, then you'll move on to the next thing. So reviewing what that feedback is, um, putting it into the work, learning and then putting it into practice. So and it just keeps going round and round. Um, so actually, what I might do is just stop the presentation for a minute. Tara, did you want to um, share your screen if I? Um... Yep. 
Are my slides off? Hold on, screen sharing, stop share. I need to press that button too. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. sorry about that. Excellent. Well, um, I'm going to hand over to Tara. If you've got any questions, pop them in the pop them in the chat. I'll keep an eye on that. But Tara, let's um let's um have a little bit of a look and and you can show everyone about what it looks like behind the scenes at the College yeah. of Law. All right. So what I'll do is I'll put it into student view because obviously that's the view you're going to be seeing. Um, so our Canvas, um, or we refer to it as our learning portal, is your one-stop shop, basically. Um, you can access all your assignments, all your activities in a number of different ways. So for example, if we go through assignments, I just want to show you. So we break down into instructions, resources, and your actual submission. So with your instructions, it's like getting a file from your supervisor to have a look at. So we, if I go click on instructions, um, we've got an email in this one, for example. So you need to read that, um, work your way through that activity, uh, with the help of the resources, which are just one click away as well. So our practice papers, which we review every year, um, can be accessed via just one, one click, basically. Um, for example, there we go. So we can access those that way. So you, you're not hunting around it's all there for you um, and also you know relevant legislation in civil litigation uh, there's the ability just to access the relevant court forms so like I say everything's basic basically just a click away for you um, also I guess too with um, some guidance. So I'm a big fan of feed forward. So you get your instructions from you know, your file, from your supervisor. Um, and like I said before, that could be an email, that could be a memo, um, a letter, you know, anything along those lines. You have your instructions, but I like to then, uh, I guess, make it a little bit easier. For, for everyone, including myself, and we'll have some feed forward for you. So what you, you know, need to be focusing upon, basically. And um, depending how in-depth I'm going, I might even uh, suggest, you know, just read this part of the practice paper or have a focus on this part of the legislation or, or whatever. So it's about you know, like I said, making your life easier and also my life easier. Um, from the point of view of what you need to submit, uh, letters of advice, um, memos to a supervisor in civil drafting court documents. So you need to draft a statement of claim, an application, affidavit, um, what else do we do? Oh, sometimes presentations. So we get you to um, put together a PowerPoint or something similar. Um, and then you have to present, present that in the oral assessment. So from the point of view of um, activities, I was just going to say, obviously with your full-time course, because it's 15 weeks, versus your part-time with your 30 weeks, um, that means double the work has to be done every week. So in a full-time course, for example, you might start off with doing maybe two activities a week, but it'll quickly uh, work its way up to four activities a week. With your part-time course, it's one activity a week. Sometimes, you know, if you're unlucky, it's two activities a week. So it is a significant difference um, in your workload. And, and that's why Jackie said before that we don't recommend you do 
full-time work, full-time PLT, but we understand if, if you need to, basically. Um, what else can I tell you? Activity-wise, yes, there are due dates, but yes, like Jackie was saying before, we are very reasonable. We know there's other things going on in your life. That being said, we're not walkovers, but um, communication is key, basically. So if you're in a spot of trouble, email us um, and we're happy to help. From the perspective, I guess, of how, you know, these activities um, go towards an ultimate grade, maybe, your activities are there just as your learning tool. So once again, Jackie mentioned feedback. So you will receive very specific, not general feedback to what you have submitted. Um, that will hopefully, you know, be like if you gave a letter to your supervisor and he or she reads through it and, you know, Sometimes, unfortunately, you walk out of the office and go, oh, my goodness, have I done anything right? Um, we're not quite as severe as that, but we provide you with the feedback. Um, it's a safe environment, so you give it a good crack. We give you some feedback. You know, every so often you might have to resubmit, but, you know, more times not. Um, but the idea is to use that feedback for your growth and learning, but also when we get to the oral assessment. So your oral assessment is 100% of your mark for each subject. Um, might sound a bit scary, but as long as you've put the effort into each of those activities, as long as you take on board the feedback, as long as you read the essential resources, you should be in a position where you can pass your oral assessment. Um, so your activities, I guess, um, are helping your learning and getting you to a point where you should be able to sit that oral assessment and have no, no worries about passing. Why an oral assessment? Well, even if you don't want to be a litigator and you you know you don't have to be in front of a judge once again like what Jackie said before you've got to communicate um, whether it's with a supervisor or a client even you know someone on the same I guess level within the firm as yourself you need to know how to communicate and what better way to sit sit you down um, and have a chat basically about what you've learned and you know how to apply it and how to extend yourself so that's why we've gone down the oral assessment route um, and I treat it as a conversation you know like as if if we were um, supervisor um, and I was mentoring you I treat it like that some people treat it more like um, some assessors treat it more like a judge and you know get questions fired at you but like I said it, it's just to take into account that as a as a lawyer you're going to be speaking and communicating a lot basically and what else Jackie I feel like I've just dumped a whole lot of information on these poor people <laughs> no that was that was great um and don't be nervous about 100% our assessments and look I can say don't be nervous, but everyone will be the first time. But most of people that I spoke to, you know, what once they're sort of into the course or, or out of the course, one of the things, because um, we actually do have a graduate come back and chat to you in week one to sort of give you some hot tips. Um, and they all say, oh, once you do that first one, you realise that it's a, it's a human being that you're talking to and that they're working very hard to get you through that subject and it is a conversation. Once they've done one, it's not quite so scary. Um, but if, and, and what they're asking you is all about the work that you've done. So if you've got through those tasks and activities and um, you've reviewed the feedback and you've learned from the feedback, um, then that'll sort of become part of the, 
the conversation. Um, and also those feed forwards that Tara was saying, a lot of the lecturers do those. They're pretty much right in this subject. This is what we're looking for. Um, so, um, you know, don't skip over those. They're very, they're very handy, aren't they, Tara? Does anyone have any questions or, or want to see something or to talk to um, Tara about something specific with, about the coursework part of the presentation? If you think about something um, later on, just pop it in the chat. Um, and you can certainly, if you think about something much later on, you can certainly um, let us know afterwards, be more than happy to assist. All right, I might go back to sharing um, my screen and trying to blow my ring light. There we go. So that's coursework. Um, and our, Again, um, our grads, much like Matt on, on the screen here, um, talk about the practical skills that they they learnt um, through PLT, um, you know, skills for real life. So role playing, interviews, negotiation, courtroom appearances under the guidance and mentorship of actual lawyers, um, barristers um, and judges. So um, actual, actually on your feet, practising, practising the law um, so that when you're doing it for real, um, you know what you're doing. Um, so, and, and then the work that you will do for every single subject throughout the course will be completing those real, well, mock mock real matters uh, rather than learning the theoretical, um, you know, the theoretical part of the law. You've already done that. And again, um, you'll have your practice papers. And a lot of um, our graduates that we chat to um, sort of after they've left PLT, they keep those practice papers with them and you know, long after they've let go of their university textbooks, those practice papers are there um, as a bit of a guide, especially when they're maybe doing something that they don't do that often. And they were like, oh, I'll just look that up, see what the College of Law has to say about that. We've also got a, a great tool coming. Um, so by the time you guys have finished PLT, it should be here or just about here. It's called the um, New Lawyer Toolkit. So a lot, of, um, a lot of stuff is actually going to be on a handy online platform for you, including the practice papers. Um, after after you finish so which is great because then there'll be the updated versions all the time um, a lot of our grads talk about the invaluable feedback that they got from their um, lecturers and mentors as they um, guided them through the course um, so it was actually as Tara said like receiving um, practice and getting that feedback from a boss and putting it into into your actual legal practice and then review sessions which is the non-scary marketing word for online um that your oral assessment. So again, don't be nervous about them. I know you will be, but um, just prep the best you can, get through your first one, and then you'll probably relax, be a bit more sort of um, confident um, going going into the rest of them. But if you're prepared, um, you'll you'll be fine. Okay, so that's coursework. Let's talk about that pillar two, which is work experience. So we have at the moment three options for you. So those that are working, and I know that some of you are, the exciting news is you are already some of the way through your PLT requirement. Yay. So the standard option, which is our most popular, and I'd say that about 80% of our students do this option, it's 75 days of work experience. And 60 of those 75 days can be done in the two years before commencing PLT. So let's just say that some of you are um, going to be, start let's just say, let's just say November this year, some of you are starting. So if you go, hmm, November 2020 to November 2022, can I find 60 days in those two years? Yes, I can. It can be with different employers. You just fill out some forms which you could, you could do this week if you wanted to, if you've already got your 60 days, send that into the College of Law um, and then you do your final 15 days while you're doing PLT or you've actually got two years from when you finish your coursework. So plenty of time. We have people start PLT with those 60 days signed off and, and a job and basically they get through that within three weeks and they're done. We have people start PLT without a job without having stepped foot into a law firm. 
everything in between. So if, if you're um, at whatever end of that spectrum, don't worry about it. You've got plenty of time. You've got a whole two years. And some people do like to do their coursework and then worry about their work experience or have it lined up for after PLT. Of course, you don't receive your completion certificate um, till you've ticked all three boxes, but that's totally up to you if you want to sort of extend it a little bit. And if that works for your what you've got on your plate, um, then that's fine. You'll get to admission at some stage. It's your choice. Now, the second option we've got is our 15-day option. Now, this is um, much like the final 15 days of the standard. Those 15 days have to be done during PLT or after PLT. So you can't start um, any of that now. You can't retrospectively claim any. Um, you also, um, to, to chop 60 days off, you have to do an extra subject, which is the clinical experience module, which is an extra subject with a start date and a finish date. It runs for six weeks. It's always timed um, to start um, sort of after the full-time course. So full-time students can finish their coursework and then do it. Part-timers can start halfway through at week 16. Now, if you don't want to do it right then, then just wait for the next one. That's totally fine. Again, it's up to you. You complete the 15 days, you have those signed off, and then you can enroll in your clinical experience module. There is an extra cost because it is that extra subject, and I'll show you that in a minute. Now, our COVID option, <laughs> this came about um, as we went, you know, as March 2020 and April 2020 rolled around, we just sat there and watched all the jobs drop off our jobs board, which was very tragic. And everyone was saying there's no, um, you know, there's no jobs available, there's no work experience available. And this was all true at the time. There, It sort of, you know, has come back now, of course. And I think as we go into 2023, there'll be a lot more um, again. However, this is still available through until mid-2023. So um, you guys doing the course from the end of this year, next year will be fine. However, if, if you've got a year or so to go, this might not be available. I say might not because it's not College of Law's call. It's um, the Chief Justice and the admitting bodies. And if they pull the plug on it, um, at any time, then we have to stop offering it. So we would like to keep, keep it going. So it's zero days of work experience, but again, an additional subject um, called the in-practice component where we match you with um, a very experienced legal practitioner who guides you through an eight-week online program um, of mentoring and work. So sort of like simulating work. I personally think that the more work experience, the be better that you can get during the PLT um, experience, so 75 days or 15 days, but there is that option if you're really struggling or for whatever re reason um, need to use that one. Again, it's flexible. It's completely your choice. Lots of different ways to get work experience. I'll let you read through that list. And again, it, you can be building up this work experience at several different um, and I mentioned that there was a there's a form to put in sort of the beginning of the work experience and then one at the end. Or if you're working now and you've already done um, 60 days, you just put them both in at the same time, retrospectively. That's fine. Everyone does it. Um, so say if you um, had two two employers, you would put one set of form in for that um, that bit of work experience and then another set of forms for the rest of it. And the same person has to sign all of your um all of your forms. Um, and I should have mentioned the the standard option people who do the 75 days, you also do a reflective journal at the end, um, just on the last 15 days. So um, there is a little bit of work to do there. Okay, CPD, this is really easy. I'll get through this quickly. Um, when you are a real lawyer with a practicing certificate, you need to re renew that every single year and you need to acquire 10 CPD points throughout that year and they're broken down into sort of different categories when, when you're actually a lawyer. However, at um, PLT, we just practice that and um, we, it's just 10 points, one point each for um, each of 10 self-paced online interactive modules that we just go here. Here they are, part of your portal. Click here, do the modules. Um, you might like to do them one at a time, two at a time, you know, one a weekend, two a weekend, or you might like to smash through them and do them all at once. It's totally, totally your call. Um, they are um, legal tech and business skills for the changing future of law. And once you've done all 10, you'll also acquire an additional certificate of legal tech and business. And you can add that um, to your resume um, 
and to your LinkedIn and it's something else to talk about in um, interviews. So that's the third pillar. You need tick, you need tick, you need tick, either by the end date of your course or shortly thereafter. And that's when you'll receive your um, um, graduate diploma of legal practice. Now, we've got lots of people to support you. Obviously, you've got me as your relationship manager. And I'm swan around the Gold Coast from time to time. I've been there, down there a couple of times recently. I love to visit. It's a beautiful campus. Um, I just love hanging out with you guys on the Gold Coast. Um, we've got a couple of events um, in early in the year as well. So, But if you need to talk to me before that, if you just want to say, hey, how am I going to work my work experience? This is what I've got. What form should I put in? Just give me a call or make a time to chat and we can talk through that. Um, but we've also got our student liaison team. So our student services team down in Sydney. They're great and they're there to help you from now, help you with sort of the admin side of things, um, with your applications, if, you know, payment, um, you know, your putting it through fee help, anything like that, moving once you're in the course, changing your assessment dates uh, or, um, you know, if you need to move from one course to another, what, whatever, they're there to help. We also have um, people like Tara. Um, so your instructors, your teachers, your lecturers, your online mentors. And we do actually assign each um, cohort will have a dedicated person. So Tara will have certain groups assigned to her She's like the mother hen and that's her little chickens and she has to, she works with each and every one of them to, to move them and make sure that they're moving through the course and keep on track. It's a bit like, I shouldn't say chickens, it's kittens, isn't it? It's herding kittens some days, isn't it? So um, as Tara said, keep in contact, let us know, let your, your mentor know what's going on. And if you're needing any help or, or you know, anything's a rearrange, that's there, there to help you along with the student services team. Um, we've also got dedicated career coaches. These are only available for College of Law students. So um, the third picture there is a wonderful colleague, Susan. There's also another lady called Ruth. Um, we, between the two of them, they're, they're here five days a week and they um, do one-on-one -on -one, um, sessions with our students to help with interview pet prep, resume reviews, building your personal brand. So if you're going for an interview, you might, um, or you just want to, you know, zhuzh things up as you're preparing um, to apply for jobs, you can book in to see them. Sometimes there's a bit of a wait, they're very popular. Um, they also run a lot of free online webinars. And um, those are what we advertise that you guys can attend now. And I always let um, your LSA team know and they they also advertise us for them. And then of course, there's the college connections. So we have a jobs board with jobs available. Um, Gold Coast jobs come up all the time. I know there was one going up there. I don't know if it's up yet, but there was a great one about to be advertised. So um, uh, keep an eye on that. And then we also obviously have lots of um, people throughout our network who are alumni. Um, do it your way, only pay for what you need. So at College of Law, we've got, it's very flexible and we have different options. So we mentioned everyone pay does the course fee and then they might do the 75 day option, the 25 day option, the zero day option. So if um, everyone pays your course fee, um, so that's um, for Australian citizens and um, permanent residents, 10,150. And you can put that on fee help, which is like your hex for your postgraduate um, level of study. Now, that includes your, textbooks, which is what we call our practice papers, which Tara mentions we review every year. They're being reviewed at the moment. Um, access to all your um, CPD modules, every, everything. If you're doing the standard option, which most people do, that's it. That's all you pay. If you decide because it suits you better, you want to do the clinical experience module option, that extra subject is 1,610. I don't know where the 10 comes from. But, oh. It's not, it's not a nice round. It, it, it messes with my mind. It's not, it should be $1,600. But anyway, $1,610 is, is the figure. Um, and then if you are electing, um, if it's still available to you to do the in-practice component, that's $2,000. So you'll either do one or the other. You don't do both, obviously. Um, so you do co just course fee, just course fee and CM, or course fee and IPC. Those are the three combinations. Little bit of a summary, College of Law PLT by numbers, and these are 2021 numbers about to be updated, of course. Um, we ran 180 programs in seven Australian states and territories. Last year, over 5,000 people graduated from 
College Law PLT and moved into the profession through admission ceremonies nationally. Um, we delivered, oh, we had 19 um, on-site like in-person places offered. Um, Susan and Ruth did 425 career consultations. I know that figure was over 500 this year already. So they've been much busier this year. Ruth actually only came on board mid last year. So that's why it's a bit lower. Um, and nearly, so 277 qualified lawyers mentoring our students across Australia as lecturers, Tara being one of them. Um, and Ruth and Susan hosted 11 free career webinars with 31 guest speakers. Um, we had over a thousand jobs on the bo jobs board. And here's something that I wanted to mention as well. If you decide to do one of our very practical master's programs, which quite often is the first step towards specialist accreditation or just taking that next step in your career, um, if you come back to the College of Law as one of our PLT graduates, we give you credits um, but towards two electives. So an eight subject masters becomes six subjects. We offer four intakes a year. So four semesters for one of a better analogy. And you can knock that off one subject at a time in a year and a half. That's very appealing. And we had a lot of people going straight into from PLT to masters over COVID because they had nothing else to do. Love it, quote unquote. Um, we also do the preparation program for admission as a solicitor into the UK. And we're ce celebrating six years of the Centre for Legal Innovation. If you've got any interest in AI, legal tech, um, sort of legal disruption, all that sort of thing. The Centre for Legal Innovation is an innovation focused think tank at the College of Law, um, where we sort of partner and team up, team up with people from law firms across Australia, but across the world as well, to, um, and lots of legal tech startups. Um, and they you know, have all sorts of stuff happening and you can actually um, get free membership as a student. So um, check out our website for further information about that or just Google Centre for Legal Innovation at the College of Law or ask me for the link. It's um, if you're interested in that stuff. Okay, so here's the decisions we've got to make. Do you want to do 100% online? Do you want to do that week one face-to-face? -face? Um, do you want to do it full-time? Do you want to do it part-time? Do you want to do standard work experience? Do you want to do the um, clinical experience module to shorten it to 15 days? Do you want to do the IPC if it's available? Um, do you want to do part-time, full-time? Do you want to do that evening course? So lots of different options, um, you know, sort of choose your own adventure as to what works for you and happy to chat through um, sort of offline to help you make those decisions. So a little bit of a summary with the beautiful Jessica here. Um, as I mentioned earlier, over 30 law firms um, partner with us to train their graduates. So if you do go to any of the big firms, you'll end up in the College of Law program as a matter of course. Nationally, about 77% of law students, law graduates um, choose the College of Law. Um, which is quite exciting. It's sort of different in every state, but that's a national average. And we're coming up to 49 years of experience training lawyers. PLT has only been around since the 90s in this current form, but um, in some form or other, we have been training lawyers for nearly 50 years. And this is what our grads tell us they sort of considered when making the decision and everyone's decision, you know, will have different things that, that weigh up more important or less important. Do you have, you know, does the PLT provider you're looking at have regular intakes? Well, with 150 nationally and over 30 just in Queensland, you don't need to wait a whole semester or a whole six months to do our next intake. It'll be coming up the next month or within a few weeks. Can you study your way, part-time, full-time, evening? Um, what else were the options? Um, you know, it, and is it flexible? Can you complete it quickly? Yes. If you do all the right things and you can get through in 15 weeks, that's, I think, one of the quickest on the markets. Um, ask your friends and colleagues. Look, you don't have to go very far on the Gold Coast to find a College of Law trained lawyer. There's, um, you know, a huge um, a gathering of our alumni down there. So um, talk to people that are already admitted and see what their experience is. And then... Whilst the College of Law is the largest um, provider of practical legal training, we are the um, market leader with 77% of people coming to the College of Law. It's a big national body. However, we have a local 
um, each state sort of runs its own show. And so we have a, a, a local executive director who started the college nearly 20 years ago. We have a local campus with local Queensland content and Queensland practitioners. So you're not going to be being taught by people from other states. It will be people like Tara who have got years and years and years of experience actually practicing law in Queensland. Our practice papers are all Queensland focused. So we have Queensland ones, Victoria ones, you know, each state has its own. Um, and, and we have actual bricks and mortar um, in Brisbane. So local, but national, big, but small. So it's kind of the best of both. So connect with the College of Law. Um, I do encourage you to follow them on Facebook and follow them on um, LinkedIn mainly. Those are the two sort of meatiest, more informational, but you can also see what else is happening on, on the Instagram and there's our um, website as well, colllaw.edu.au slash PLT. And again, I'd love you to blow up my phone with LinkedIn requests. Um, and if you did want to make a time to chat, just send me an email at Owen. O W E N at colour C O L L A W dot E D U dot A U. Um, Casey and Ruby and the team have my contact details as well. Happy for those to be passed along. Or find me on LinkedIn and we can set up a time to chat. So I might just um, end the slideshow, come over here, stop sharing, and flick back to full screen. And um, check if there's any questions. So, oh my goodness, seven minutes to seven. We're so efficient, Tara. Need to get Tara ready for, she might have, have a glass of wine, a birthday glass of wine waiting potentially. Is oh, Jackie, I do have a question. Yes, Sorry Ruby, please. Um, so I think I'll probably do the evening session that starts in November. I think yes. it's like the 21st. Um, yes. And I was just wondering, so I was looking at applying for that and because I haven't actually finished my degree yet, I don't have confirmation that I've sit my final exam. So do I still need to ring QLS or contact them before I apply, even though when I start PLT, I will have done my final exams? No, I do not believe okay. so. Um, if you want to send okay, me an great. email tomorrow, I can flick that onto student services and just check. But I, I'm pretty... I, I, answer this question for someone else the other day and I did send it to student services I think okay. just go through the application process and mm -hmm. because you finished your final exam before you start PLT that's all good because yours is um because you're on the trimester your exams are in October aren't they yeah so I'll be yes. well and truly finished by November yes I wouldn't worry about the special permission okay, I believe great. that is correct yeah because now great. you haven't finished but by then you have yeah Okay, yeah. great. Thank you yeah. so much. Which is one less thing for you to do, which is great. And then yeah. you won't have might not have received your results. Quite often, Griffith students get, uh, get them literally in week two or week three. That's fine. Um, just send them through um, when you get them. Great. Um, great. Thank you. You will not be the only one that hasn't submitted your res your um, trans. You know your degree and your transcript. Yeah, because my transcript will say that I've doing my final courses it just yes. won't have my grade yes that's so okay yeah so you know how you get that unofficial one some people send that unofficial one and then they send their official one so yeah just just okay. keep it updated as information comes to hand you've got technical okay. until census day and our census day is five weeks in much like uni oh so that should be fine yeah that 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 i believe usually um suits griffith students um look having said that i have seen people submitting putting their 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 degrees in after the course is finished <laughs> don't do that <laughs> as it comes to hand just flick it off okay um, can do it off thanks Jackie. services excellent thanks um Excellent. Well, as I as I mentioned, hopefully that's answered lots of your questions. Oh, there's a hand up. Was that your hand? Yeah, yeah I had a question really quickly. Um, Hit us, Tobias. Yeah, you mentioned before um, that it could help you prepare to go to the UK, the College of Law. Yes. Are there any other countries such as like Canada that you guys can help prepare for? Not Canada, but um, the US bar in New York and California. I think with a lot of common law countries, if you're admitted here, Tara, you might have more information about this. Um, 
common law countries, if you're a lawyer here, I think it's you can go over and practice there. You might have to do something. You probably want to work out like where, you, where you're thinking about going in Canada and then they'll have an admitting body in that province. So, um, you know, if you sort of go, oh, okay, I'm wanting to go to Vancouver, you would look up the admitting body in that province and then look at what their requirements are here, uh, are there for them. Um but I think those at the UK and the US are the only ones that there is actually courses. I think everywhere else, it's sort of just go through the admitting body. Yeah, okay. Because for Griffith, there are some electives in the final year you can do yes. that. More, so, yeah, okay. Cool. Yes, and you have a lot of Canadian students that come to Griffith because I've met quite a few of them. They're all fabulous. Excellent. And the law school might have further information because they um, they have that, you know, sort of flow back and forth between, um, you know, with, with Canadian students there. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Excellent. Awesome. I can't see any more questions in the chat box. Does um, anyone else, I'm just seeing if there's any more raised hands, um, does anyone have any further questions before we... We all head off and watch whatever it is we're watching on uh, Trust Your TV at the moment. I don't think I've got anything going on, on at the moment. Didn't get into the block. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Excellent. Well, happy birthday, Tara, from <laughs> on behalf of everyone. Thanks so much for sharing your birthday with us. So we'll release you to um, enjoy the rest of your birthday evening. And um, if anyone's got any further questions, just get in touch with us um, later and be more than happy to set up a time to chat and look forward to um, seeing you on the Gold Coast in the not too distant future. So Thank have a you, great Tara and Jackie. Have a great Thanks, night. Ricky. You Thanks. too. Talk to you Thank soon. You. Bye.